what is the state of affairs with the UAE? They were seen as perhaps the most resistant to coming back together. No, actually we have seen uh, th there is some progress uh, between us and the UAE. There is a communication started. We look forward to continue the discussion. Uh, we are ready to address any, uh, any issues uh, that w uh, they have with Qatar or Qatar have with, uh, with the UAE. We have resumed. Uh, we have resumed the flights already. Uh, there was meant to be bilateral talks, though, as well. Uh, bilateral talks, as well. Uh, are those ongoing? Actually, uh, actually uh, the ba the principles of uh, of the resolution is to agree on on a general principle, which we have mentioned in, in, in several occasions and then carry on a bilateral talks to address if there are any differences or any challenges in the relationship and work together in resolving uh, these challenges and differences and look for the future. Uh, I believe that uh, we are here in Qatar, we are a forward looking. We need to, uh, and, you know, to understand uh, uh, f from our experience in the past and in the rift and to benefit from uh, what happened over there. Uh, but also to carry on uh, for, for the future and to be more forward looking. We don't need to be a hostage of the past. And I think this is for the interest of our people. Well, let me rewind a little bit to the past. And you know, one of the things that caused um, some of the animosity between uh, the boycotting states and Qatar, you know, ac ac specific accusations aside, was the idea that Qatar was more supportive of popular movements that unseated um, leaders uh, unsettled perhaps certain parts of the region uh, and in fact um, Hamad bin Jassim bin, uh, bin Thani told the FT in 2011 that we should not fear um, moderate Islam, Islamists, political Islam. Is that something that you still believe, that Qatar still believes? Well, Qatar foreign policy uh, has been based on, on principles and these principles has never changed. We, we are going to support the f whatever the people will and whatever the people are going to seek for in, in, uh, in their countries if they are going to seek for justice using peaceful way uh, to express what what they think it's right Qatar will continue supporting the people and this hasn't been changed for for very long time and Qatar continue uh, to carry the same policy maybe there were some differences or disagreement uh, around how we conduct uh, this policy but at the end of the day, uh, we need to sit together and to dialogue together uh, between us and the other GCC members and to understand these differences and try to bridge it. But it doesn't mean that you are going to change your principles just because it's uh, uh, not uh, aligned with other countries' interests. Because it's, it's uh, actually each country in the GCC has its own foreign policy and they are taking their decision, which is not necessarily that are aligned with the principles that Qatar uh, is supporting, but at the end of the day, we have to respect their decisions. Should we expect a Gulf GCC Iran summit anytime soon? I know you've called for that. Well, uh, we are hopeful that this, uh, uh, this should happen, and we still believe that this should happen. And I think this is also uh, uh, a desire that being shared among the other GCC countries. That w What I just mentioned to you, that there is a differences between the countries on the way how to approach uh, such a dialogue. Also from Iran's side, they have expressed their willingness several times to engage with, with the GCC countries. And I believe that the time should come where uh, when the GCC will sit on the table with Iran and uh, uh, ha reach a common understanding uh, between the countries that we, c we have to live with each other. We cannot change geography. The, uh, Iran cannot move GCC uh, away from its neighborhood, and the GCC cannot move Iran away from the neighborhood. Is that time now with a Biden administration that looks perhaps like it may return to the 2015 nuclear deal? Well, uh, we hope that uh, w what will happen between the U.S. and Iran, and they are, we hope that they are going to reach a solution with the, what's happened with the JCPOA, uh, that will help. Uh, between the GCC and Iran. Of course, everything is, is interconnected at the end of the day. Do you want Qatar to be the center of those discussions? Oman played a very large role last time around. Is this something that you see yourself? 
for us here in Qatar, what we want, we want uh, uh, the accomplishment. We want to see the deal happening. Wherever it is, whoever is, is conducting this negotiation, we are going to support him. If Qatar will be asked by the stakeholders to play a role in this, we will be welcoming this idea. We have, we maintain a good relationship with the U.S. We maintain a good relationship with, uh, with Iran. Iran is our neighbor. We have borders together uh, they have stood with us uh, uh, during the crisis and supported all our uh, logistics lines and i believe there is a, a, a mutual respect between the countries that uh, allows qatar to uh, play such a role but uh, i'm uh, reaffirming that if any country is going to play that role qatar will be fully supportive for that and will not do anything unless it's been asked by the parties. Well, it looks like South Korea is perhaps reaching out to Qatar for assistance in resolving uh, the tanker and, and the, the crew that, um, that are, are detained in, in Iran. Um, what assistance are you providing them, if any, and um, what, what's the situation right now? Well, uh, with, with, the, so with the South Korean uh, tanker crisis, we have received uh, the request from the Korean government. Right now, we are working on it with, uh, with Iran and to see it, to find a way. They are talking to each other directly, actually, and uh, they might just need Qatar support for, for the process, but uh, they have their own direct link. And uh, our response to our friends in Korea that whatever we can do to help, we are going to help. We are talking to uh, the Iranians and we hope that we can help in facilitating any, any of, of, of the talks for, for the release of the tanker. You're also chairman of QIA. Um, do you foresee lots of investments in China or, or in the Asian region generally? And, and, wi and if so, which specific countries outside of China were you looking at? Well, actually, uh, Asia has been uh, very much uh, in our interest and in, in our, on our radar screen. It's just uh, it's not only uh, from a growth perspective, but also from a diversification perspective, because uh, we in QIA, we've been investing in Europe uh, heavily uh, in the past 10 years and in the recent years also uh, in the US we've been uh, very much focused and Asia didn't uh, take the fair portion of, of the investments. Uh, right now uh, in our focus we are still uh, looking at all the regions but uh, Asia and uh, North America are still a priority uh, for us. Uh, there are no specific countries in Asia, but we are following the opportunities wherever uh, it emerges. China is one, of course, is one of the most important markets in Asia that Qatar is looking uh, forward to uh, increase its investments. We have been doing uh, a lot of investments in the past couple of years there in China, and they've been doing very well.